Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Uh, first thing I'm supposed to say is be sure and subscribe. And the other thing I want to say is be sure and, and click on the notification bell so that when, you're, when we put up a new video, you'll be notified. Okay, now this is something I really didn't plan today, but my buddy John came over and he was complaining that his bike is not running right and it could very well be that something's wrong. But I kind of think there's nothing wrong. Okay, this is a nice motorcycle. Um, this is a 2002 Dyna with a carburetor on it. And the reason I mentioned the carburetion is because we don't have a whole lot of late model motorcycles with carburetors on them anymore and people don't learn what to do with them much anymore. And so I listened to it and it sounded pretty good, but he's telling me it has a lean spit. Or he described a lean spit. I'm interpreting it as a lean spit. John didn't necessarily feel that way. We'll see whether or not either one of us was right. But Anyway, the bike has aftermarket exhausts on it. I think they're Screaming Eagle units. Nice, less back pressure with them. And it has a Screaming Eagle air cleaner. It's either a Screaming Eagle or a, an Arlen Ness Big Gulp, Big Sucker. Yes, it's an Arlen Ness Big Sucker, which is a really nice air cleaner. The point I'm getting at is you have more air going in, more air going out, therefore more power. However, at that point, you're creating a lean condition and you need to have uh, a richer um, jet. And the main jet on a bike like this, when I say a bike like this, because it's basically a stalker with just a mildly modified intake and exhaust, basically, you just need the low speed jet changed. Because the high speed jet, the main jet, you're not even on that thing till you're going 65, 70 miles an hour, and the main jet is normally adequate. So it's the low speed jet that you normally need. Now, we live at about 27, 26, 2700 feet above sea level, so I have in my mind what jet should be in there for a low speed jet. And I'd say probably a number 48 or better. So John took the air cleaner off this thing and cleaned it, and I'm going to open the carburetor, and I'm going to take out the low-speed jet, and we'll see if I'm right. I could be, and maybe not. So we already cracked these screws loose. Sometimes they're really, really tight, and you have to be really careful so you don't strip the heads on them. But there's four Phillips head screws here, and... I'm going to take all four of them out, take the float bowl off, and then I will have access to the jets. This is a standard Harley CV carburetor called CV for constant velocity. It is a slide carburetor with a butterfly. They're a good little carburetor. Um, I think they were, they're a real improvement over all of the previous carburetors Harley had. The only thing about them I don't like is when you start wanting to really go fast, they're kind of limited because they're not a really big carburetor. I think they're something like a 38 millimeter carburetor. And I like to start with about a 42 and go up from there. So again, it's a good quality item but not really a big carburetor. A lot of guys run them because they are good carburetors, so. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to say a lot of guys. A lot of people getting to be more and more and more, not just female riders, but female experts, female mechanics, and people that really know their stuff, so I want to be respectful. All right. That screw is going to come out, I swear it is. This is the last one. And there it is. Number four. There it is. And we'll take the bowl off. 
And once we get the bowl off, we'll set it aside. And we'll go into, let's get a flashlight. It's been a while since I opened one of these carburetors up. There it is. Go right up here with this screwdriver. Get in there. And there it is. I heard it crack loose. Now the good thing is going to be if I can actually read what size it is. I may have to pass it around the shop here and have everybody read it. And there it is. It's a little dirty. And I can't read it. Yes, I can. And it is a, I believe that's a 45. Forty. I can't tell if that's a 45 or a 48. Maybe a 48. John, you got good eyes? No. You want to try to read the number on that thing? Right on the top, on the, on the face there. Can you see that? It's like a four. It might be a forty-eight. I mean, I may be. It may be exactly what it needs. If it is, I'm going to put a bigger one in it. So there. Yeah, that looks like an eight. Good. Then I'm going to put a number fifty in there. What do you think of that? It makes me happy. I'm for it. We have that flashlight back and I can see whether or not this is a 50. Well, I can't see it. I mean, the number is really little. Let me see if I have a magnifier here that I can use to see if that's a number 50 or not. Well, I can't see it, but it came out of the slot that said 50 on it. So we're going to put it in there. You still have that 48, right? Yep. Okay, we're going to put a 50 in there, and I think we're going to be happy with it. Okay. Now, the point I'm getting at, there we go, and we'll put it in there, and that should do it. Now, I used to live at sea level and a standard bike would get generally about a 52. Number 52 would go in them. Okay, let's see. Now I'm putting the bowl back on. You have to use the uh, accelerator pump shaft. Be sure you get it put in place. Slide the bowl right back in place. And there it is. Not very difficult. But I got a feeling that number 50 is, uh, it'll be better. If it's not 100% better, we'll go to a 52. Like I said, when I lived at a lower elevation, I put 52s in most, most bikes that I did this on. But we don't really know what's going on. It does not appear to have a vacuum leak but it does have a lean spit and the accelerator pump appears to be working just fine. So here we go. The other thing I might mention, which I think is very important, is John always uses real good gas. And uh, so he's not putting any cheapo gas in this thing. So we can't use that as an excuse. And we'll go from there. I can't be recommending brands of gasoline, but uh, I heard that whisper back here. You quit that. Quit that. Quit that. Okay. 
we have four screws back in place and we'll tighten them up with my stubby little Phillips screwdriver. Now I'm making this look pretty easy and it is, but sometimes you have to remove the carburetor just to get these Phillips screws out of here because from the factory they're really torqued in there and they seem to seize in place. So quite often I use an impact driver and have someone hold the carburetor so that it's cushioned and hit an impact driver and take those screws right out of there. The aftermarket suppliers also make, or used to, I think they still do, a Phillips a, uh, Allen head screw kit for these float ball screws. Okay, that being said and done, the bowl is back on, the jet has changed, <clears throat> and what we're going to do is uh, Use a little bit of this magical white lithium grease. Of course, it's got to have a dog hair in it, so I know it's mine. My dog has her hair everywhere. Now John's been hanging around the house here, so chances are, if I were to open his motor, I would find my dog's hair. Okay, now we're going to put a little white lithium grease on these O-rings here. To make sure that they seal a little bit. There, I like that. Okay, now we have three bolts that go in here. Two and three. Okay, now what we're going to do is put them in place. Way too easy. Okay, now, next thing will be more white lithium grease. And we'll put that one there. Now these bolts, there's nothing wrong with them. They just happen to be one of my least favorite things on earth. And that is because they're made out of a not very strong material. And they're hollow. Which is a good design for a breather bolt. But it's not a very good design for a guy who's leaning on it with a great big wrench. Because everyone I know that ever started working on these in a shop managed to break these bolts. So when you tighten them, use a short wrench. And they're tightening up just fine. which draws the carburetor in nicely to the manifold, just like it was designed. Okay, now the jet has changed. The uh, air cleaner is almost on. And in a couple minutes here, we can start this bike up. And the cool part is, it's been sitting most of the day, so it's cold. We're going to get a good, a really good test out of it. 
In other words, how does it act from the time we start it up until it warms up and goes for a ride? So let's get these bolts tightened up. There's one. Two. And three. Again, when I tighten those big bolts up, use a short wrench. You get to thinking you're real strong when you can bust these bolts. Anybody can break those. So there they are. It's not even a bad idea to use a little blue Loctite on the threads, but we didn't. We'll see how this runs and we can always go back later. Okay. They're all so pretty, those bolts. So let's make everything nice. And let's see, I don't know where the screws are that hold this air cleaner. There they are. Let's see. I don't know that I have the tool to tighten them. But then, nobody brought it to me. That's because I didn't take it off. So really, can't blame anybody. So let's see, John, you got a, an Allen wrench for these handy? You could even give me that set of Allen wrenches there and I just use, you know what I mean, the red. It's a T25. Oh, is it a Torx? Yeah. Okay, because they're chewed up a little. Okay. All right. Oh, somebody did this with a drill. <laughs> ah, yeah, well, now they're on with the drill. I don't think I would normally do this, but I did it. They're on there. That's pretty funny. I didn't do that. Okay, now I seem to have uh, tied myself up in the uh, microphone cord. Okay, so now all I need is the Allen for this. Behind me. There it is. Okay. So we're going to see in a minute how this thing runs. That's not bad. That was quick enough. I thank you for giving me the tools I needed. I'll put that air cleaner nice and straight. And that's it. Okay, now all we need to do is pick up the tools and light this baby off. Now, if it doesn't want to spit and be rude, we'll figure it's doing pretty good. So, if I'm not caught up in a cord of any kind, that's what I was caught up in. It was a cord to the uh, to the magnifier. All right, let's get this chair out of the way. And away we go. We're ready to light it off. So let's turn it on. I'm not going to turn the enrichner on. The enrichner is off. Let's see. I need to get the fuel turned on. And I can't find it. Without going over to the other side of the bike. Okay. Fuel on? Fuel on. Thank you. And we put it on run. We whack it a couple. It should light right off.
okay, this thing needs to be taken on a test ride. But personally, that sounded pretty well to me. I've never been able to get it to start without the choke. Okay. So we're on, we're on our way in the right direction. In other words, we went from number 48 jet. I was afraid to go too rich on it. So I only went to a 50. If this thing is not running really, really, really well, we'll go to a 52. My point is I wanted to be able to do it, to sneak up on it, to get exactly the results we want. And I wanted to be able to show how easy it is to do. There are so many dealerships that don't even know how to, to uh, jet a carburetor anymore because nothing comes with a carburetor anymore. And I guess it's a little bit old technology, but there it is for those who want to do it. And I wish you the best. So until next time, see you out on the road.